top fuel dragsters. And the drivers that steer them are on the outer limits of motorsport. These machines don't just accelerate, they register on the Richter scale as they explode into life off the start line for their 500 kilometer an hour journey. The combination of raw speed and power is an addictive elixir and produces an insatiable desire for some to push the limits in this one amazing motorsport class. Since 1965, Santo Rapasada has been part of this drag racing thrill ride and has lived the addiction. A fine racer himself, this man who calls Australia his home after moving from Sicily almost five decades ago, remains one of the sport's most passionate supporters. I remember buying a, a new E.H. Holden, 1964. Within 12 months, I stripped the car down to fill three triple Weber cubbies. It's not just the millions of dollars invested over the years of competition. Santo Rapasada has sacrificed more to the sport than anyone should bear. Ask any top fuel warrior and they will tell you. When you decide to steer a race car on the ragged edge, you take the risk of falling off it. July 22, 1990. 23-year-old Louis Rapasada was continuing on the Rapasada Nitro tradition when tragedy struck. I'll tell you what I remember, that everybody, after the uh, 573, there was uh, people talking that it didn't look like a 573. And so we decided to test the Willow Bank one more time in that car to prove that the car can do it. Did his first run, and he ran uh, 599 with the wheels six foot up in the air. So we were happy with that. I said, Louis, let's pack it up and take it around. He goes, no, Dad. He said, i gotta, I got to back that up and I, I, I even want to go quicker. And that that was the last run. It was, uh, uh, blew the engine up. There was not napkins in that day. There was five. Some oil got under the wheel. And uh, the car pulled on one side, as you probably know already. That was it. Yeah. On that run, on that last run, he took his wedding pen yeah. and he gave it to his wife. Why didn't you do that all the other races? Why? Why? Why that run? Some may quit, may give up when confronted with such a tragic loss and leave the sport that took someone so significant away. For Santo Rapasada, it has been the complete opposite. Then after the, what happened, after the incident, uh, we all got together in the family and we knew that, you know, when Eastern Creek was up, I said, look, uh, I promised Louis that we were going to do this and keep going. At the time, I thought it was something for Louis, and it's all was for Louis. If it wasn't for Louis, I would never come back. As we head into the Summer Nationals at Sydney Dragway, 20 years on from the loss of a father's son, we see Santo and Louis Rapasada racing is bigger than ever. With three top fuel cars and 17 nitro engines lined up and ready to race for Louis. His boys, Santo and Santino, today are just 16 years old, but already the passion and commitment to top fuel shown in Louis Rapasada more than two decades ago are carried on with these two youngsters who are making their mark as tuners of these 8,000 horsepower beasts. Santino, Santino reminds too much of Louis. Have a look at Louis when he was the same age, and look at Santino now. They love Nitro? Oh, right, they wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> For the Australian drag racing fraternity, the contribution of Santo and Louis Rapasada on the Australian drag racing landscape is significant and never will be forgotten. It has been an enormous journey for Santo Rapasada, with debilitating lows, emotional highs, yet you sense the journey has still got a long way to go. It seems like yesterday, honestly. Still it doesn't, oh yeah, Louis is always on my mind. Louis is in everything I do, he's there. Do you sense him around? 
Is he with us now? Top fuel final, Andra Pro Series opener for the fastest accelerating landlocked missiles on the planet. And it's Steve Reed and Martin Stamatis. Steve Reed 12 months ago, high speed into the catch nets at over 500 kilometres an hour. And to be brutally honest, it's tribute to the safety gear on these cars that he's alive to talk about it today. And what a return it would be to grab a precious, prestigious Fuchs Australian Nationals gold Christmas tree. He's won five of them before. Months to Martis, he has yet to get his hands on one. He's a Winter Nationals winner, but never the Fuchs Australian Nationals. It's Heather Bond guides back this man, Steve Reed, the Reed Speed Transport car. Now, these two have met in a final before, the only time they met, but the Reeds couldn't come out and race. They had engine dramas. Stamatis took the win on a solo. Oh, could it oh. be? I've heard of some fairy tales before, but this would just be ridiculous. The good news with this, it'll be a fairy tale either, either way. Monster Martis, a likeable guy, but I think we'd all celebrate with a poem if he can pull this one out of the bag after the setbacks he's endured. The final of Top Fuel at Western Sydney Dragway. Nice tight early, shoots out early for Stamatis, and Steve Reed wins it, and Monster Martis still runs a four. That's a great way to wrap up Top Fuel. And look at the crew celebrate there. <laughs> awesome. Oh, unbelievable. What a great way to cap off an awesome top fuel drag racing meeting. The shoot for Monster Martis has come out. He didn't pull that out. That thing's just shaken out. And it's probably cost him the gold Christmas tree. Heartbreaking. What a race. There's a transition point on the racetrack. He's right on board with the palm as he grabs that gold Christmas tree. It's all his. And Heather Bonds, of course. The and, team principal. And Dwayne Riley. And Dwayne Riley as well, supplying the chassis. Mans to Martis hitting that transition point from asphalt to concrete or concrete to asphalt that's shaking the shoots out of the car. What a great final. Beautiful head of flames at half track. That shoot comes out and it's cost him that tenth of a second that he needed to win that race. The bonus points issue is significant with two rounds back to back in Western Australia. They get 50% extra points. So the ET bonus points, the speed bonus points, everything will count. It will shape the Andrew Pro Series Championship, these two rounds in Perth, starting right here. The reigning champ and a contender in the final. That's it. Stamatis wins it for Bob St. Lawrence. The emotions running high. The crowd is pumped. The local hero wins. Interesting, though, no speed mark reported for that run. Yeah. That is interesting. Well, no speed came up, so the speed points were up for grabs, but it did look like he shut that thing down early. The team are pumped up. Theo Pablo Matalakis from the Fuchs team comes over and congratulates them. We're looking from La Martina right now. Wow, tire shake and another pedal, another pedal, but by that stage, it's too late. Could we have seen for the first time this weekend a car underpower the track a little bit in the case of Lamartino Stamatis through and get some big points out of this round of the championship. Oh, a big attitude. pedal attempt Lamartina. for Lamartina. So on board with Phil Lamartina. Just it around here. Tire shake gets off. It has a stab. He's got to give the tire enough time to settle down. And I wonder in the other lane, did Mark Stamatis feather the throttle? Oh, just a bit. Subtle tweet to the butterflies. But the confidence is coming back to the West Australian. This is a wicked on board. We're riding at over 500 kilometres an hour, typically in a top fuel dragster at the Perth Motorplex. And that is big points. And we know Bobson Lawrence will be grinning like a Cheshire <laughs> cat on the start line with what's happened in this final. It all spells a terrific final of Top Fuel. Two of the powerhouse teams, not just in Top Fuel, but in Andrew Pro Series drag racing right here head to head. Big points picture told in just a moment. Well, Chad nailed it. 
Phil Reed was brilliant off the start line, but Phil Lamartina again, that is five runs down the track and five brilliant four-second passes. And that's the quickest one we've seen for the weekend. What a way to slam yeah. the door right shut. Low ET and in a lane that they haven't raced in yet tonight. That is awesome stuff. Phil Reed takes that right lane, but that thing put a cylinder out really early. Riding on, wow, look at that fuel spraying from the get-go. <laughs> and Phil Reed was almost in front of half-track with that brilliant NZ reaction time. But as the car started to eat itself alive, Phil Lamartina drove around him. That was probably an injector line going to the supercharger hat for Phil Lamartina. And uh, it looks like, yes, it pushed the head gasket out and it was around cylinder number eight, the area of the engine they were looking at when they were grinding that push rod hole. So maybe it was the difference in Perth. Yeah, the, uh, the golden arches on board cam showing <laughs> how much Phil Reed goes for as a driver. Left of screen, so it already put that cylinder out and then all that excess fuel is still wanting to be burnt. The head gasket goes out, causes a big fire, throws off the belt and it still drove through for a 4.8. They've had a good race weekend. <laughs> There was a time for this man where winning was just due process. Can you get that back? The first baby steps possibly here in this final. Stamatis out early, tosses the belt. Bill Reed breaks the streak, the winless streak. Back to that familiar W territory and the crew are happy. <laughs> Both these cars were loaded for bear and that is a smile of relief more than anything on Bruce Reed, the crew chief of this Auto One car. What's happened for Marty? Oh, it's the belt again for Stomatis. What does he have to do to keep these things on? And that was a signature slide valve problem there for Phil Reed. Left well, left hard, and then chaos on the back half of the run. Oh, it looks like a classic lean out. Look, left to screen. Whoop, there it goes, throws it out the other lane. Head gaskets out for Phil Reed in the Auto One car. Leaves well. Well, they're both left very well. 8.6 and 8.5s off the 60 foot, so they're really strong. And might I just mention, Martin Stamatis' reaction time this weekend have been flawless. You can see Phil behind him there. He left hard and talking to Rob Cavanino as well about the supercharger and the blower belts. They are going to have, they've already talked about it, a newer blower belt package heading into the next round. Welcome, Welcome well. Again, short burnout, rolling fast. Again. Great drag racing action as part of the Andrew Pro Series, thanks to Auto One and NZ. And we're now down to the final two cars in top fuel. 7,000, some say more than 8,000 horsepower. They launch quicker than their space shuttle. Enormous G forces. And that was a short burnout for Phil Reed, just quietly and a typically short burnout for Mark Mariani. The reason they do that, you can use a lot of fuel in the burnout. The last thing you want to be doing is dry reaching at the end of the racetrack when there's no fuel left in the tank. These things will just simply lean out and explode. Jim Reed shaking his hand right now. What an emotional day's racing. Santo can barely contain his happiness right now. For Louis Rapposada, there's Monster Marta shaking his hand as well. Alan Dobson in there. That is an absolute Glenn Micras, Bruce Reed. That's a who's who of top fuel in there at the moment. Everyone wants to congratulate Santo Rapposada. Their first win since September 2008 and what a deserved one it was. motorsport like it in the world. You step on the throttle. And you got this violent race car. Hurling you down a racetrack at over 300 mile an hour, 530 k's an hour. People stand on the start line, thought an earthquake had hit. Show me another motorsport in the world that does that. You know, you've got the high revving Formula Ones, the low grumbling V8 supercars. You've got the flame throwing top fuel cars. That'll scare this every time you step on the throttle. Oh, look at the 
distortion of the tyre. That is incredible. Have a look at that sideways at half track at 300 kilometres an hour. Oh. He's looking at concrete. Oh, jeez. Fire in the hole for oh. both cars. Look oh. at the flames surrounding Phil Reed. Man, these guys are absolutely crazy. There's no way you're going to lift until you see that wind light come up. We race the win. If it means I've got to take out my teammate, Martin Stamatis, I will. You know, but hey, that's racing. Stamatis out early, tosses the belt, Phil Reed breaks the winless streak. I have no fear of losing. We, we've come into the event and uh, my attitude is let's roll the dice and, uh, and just see what happens. Better end set reaction time for Dawson. Oh. It's awfully close at the finish line, but Stamatis wins it by the narrowest of margins. Oh, you go, go. <laughs> Winning another championship obviously uh, you know, going to be great. Something that you can say you went back to back. You know, if it, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But if it's not, it's not. You know, you can't. The more you want it, sometimes uh, the more it slips away. Red light for Luke Shepard. He might have. Uh, well, I think he's won oh. this, but a huge tire explosion. Oh, for Phil Lamentina, what has happened there? Uh, this season's been. Uh, up and down, like a yo-yo, honestly. Wow, that's that's popped the motor, and something's come out of the motor and gone right through that rear tyre. Could be anything. We haven't really had much success. Just the one win. So this year did, really didn't go like it did last year, that's for sure. Identical answer reaction times. It's tight at the finish. What a drag race. Oh. That is a big one in the championship. Oh, boy, look at the look on Theo Pavlikovic's oh. face. It is one of absolute distress. Losing's never any good. I feel for more from the boys, because you know how much work goes into these cars. To see the, you know, their faces probably is the hardest part, but um, yeah, losing's tough, real hard. Oops, instant tire smoke oh. for Mariani, oh. and Phil Reed gets ugly as well. That was a wicked drag race. Who cares about the ET? I mean, it'd be great to get four, but you know, for my guys, that's why I want to win it, mainly for my crew. Oh, spectacular race, and what a finish! Oh, mate, this is awesome. <laughs> like I said, winning was good, but um, sometimes it's not all as stacked up to be, that's for sure. As far as having a fear of losing, you know, it's, hey, it's life. You win, you lose. Everyone loves a winner. Winning the end of a Pro Series crown is, is the pinnacle of drag racing. I could not want anything better. The final of Top Fuel and on the anniversary of a famous moment for team principal Jim Reed at this very racetrack. It's time to fire up and see who takes out the Andrew Pro Series. Phil Reed's been here three times before. Martin Stavartis, it's great to have him right in the mix of this late stage of the season for his first Andrew Pro Series champion, if he can win this race. But for Phil Reed and their team, they've had issues every single run, and, not, and including the lead into this final. <laughs> Phil follows it up, gets a little bit sideways at the end. He's been on fire. He's been blowing up parts. Both of them have been blowing up parts. And uh, they had a mad thrash to just get the car ready for this final, changing out the dip and all sorts of stuff. But they're here. That sun has dropped, so the chin-ups will change just a little bit. This is the seventh time they've met. They hold the ledger equal at three each. But Phil Reed's won the last three. And if he's going to win the championship, he needs to win this race and go quicker than 4.60 or faster than 508 kilometres per hour. Round one for Phil Reed. The toggle switch to the arms of the air system broke. The semi-final, they had a lot of fuel coming through. The slide valve shut completely and they had double the normal fuel volume you need or normally like to have off the start line. Then they had the issue with the diff. And that means basically dismantling the back end of the car, including the rear wing. So they've been thrashing. They had to replace all the hydraulic lines, double check. It's been a monumental effort for both teams because we saw with Stamatis, he had some big issues after his semi-final run. So who's going to take out the Andrew Pro Series? Here we go. Trouble for Phil Reed on the step. It's eating up a little bit for Martin Stamatis, but on the strength of this weekend and the season, a deserving Andrew Pro Series champion, fire in the hole. 4.6 in the first pass, 4.8 in the semi, 4.7 in the final. Martin Stamatis becomes the first 
West Australian to win the Ander Top Fuel title. It started a chop ahead gasket. It's dropping cylinders. He won't care. Let's go on board with him. Blower belt stayed on. Oh, yeah. Burning out aluminium and all sorts of parts. Always catastrophic at the end of the day, but well done. History in the making. As Chad touched on the first, look at that vision. It is incredible. Big fire for the Fieldview car. That this man so passionate, so aware in the history of the sport. You can see the fire Trying glowing to get behind him. But it is historical. A big year. He comes into this event with Bob St. Lawrence deep in the edges of his mind. A West Aussie drag racing icon and a West Aussie finally wins top fuel. On goes the hat from Paul Gates from Shannon's. He is the Shannon shootout champion. He's the Pro Series champion. He's also $25,000 richer. Monster Midas. Congratulations, your maiden, your maiden Pro Series win, but your second Winter Nationals win, fantastic. I can't, words cannot describe this moment. It doesn't just get any better than this, and this will always be my most memorable moment of drag racing. It just can't get any better than this. Thanks. And to drive for Jim Reed, I can see you're choking back some emotions right now, Matty. You've had a long season, the Bob St. Lawrence drummer in the middle of the year. You had your Bob St. Lawrence jacket on. You won in Perth for Bob St. Lawrence. Is he in your thoughts today? He was in my thoughts all weekend. I, I pulled the jacket out of the wardrobe and uh, decided to bring it over and carry Bob's name into the weekend. And um, if you're up there, Bob, we started in Perth and uh, we finished here. Thanks, mate. Mighty congratulations. Thank you. sport that sees races run and done in just a handful of seconds. It certainly holds a lasting impression on its fans and racers. Aussie drag racing icon Gary Phillips knows the game that must be played in the high performance supercharged world of top alcohol drag racing need to set high levels of performance, produce consistency and have that pinch of luck at just the right time. For Debbie Reed, the right time was meant to be last season's Andrew Pro Series Grand Final, where a clean run and a win at the finish stripe would have seen her become the first woman to secure an Andrew Pro Series Championship. Here we go! Oh, it's a red line! Reed wins it! No, she doesn't! By hitting the wall, she's handed the championship back to Gary Phillips. Through the first round, the second round, and now through to the final. No massive changes there. Checking the valve clearances, everything's fine. Check the bearings. All they've done is change out into eight to ten litres of oil between each session, and that's it. Well, from night to day, or day to night, depending how you look at it, for Stephen Reid, they have been thrashing. Obviously, we saw in the rare spares pit report for the Reid Transport Funny Car, it has been a battle to even make the final, which is a shame. We Love. want to see this car run well. Who could forget last time these two met in a final at this racetrack? They're in the very same lanes. And it was Stephen Reid who had a monumental accident. Phillips went 5.5 and took his first funny car win. But our business right now is two wickedly quick funny cars. A Lucas car, the retransport car. Gary Phillips has got one eye on a national record. That's the first tick. The second tick for the Lucas car will be a 5.4 second pass. And they're starting each other's rivalry off nice and early. First round of the Andrew Pro Series. Who's going to get first blood in top alcohol? High revs. Big end head reaction time to Reed. He's losing momentum. Gary Phillips. 5.52 with a Ford national record, if you don't mind, in the Lucas car. And the speed, 417 kilometres per hour. That's 259 mile an hour. He has just missed both sides of the national record. His earlier 5.55 backs up the 5.52. It looks spectacular on the new Willowbank scoreboards. Harley Davidson replay, he gave a tenth to Stephen Reid in the NZ Reaction Times and had to chase him down. And I think Stephen Reid's done a lot of damage to that engine. Replay, and you see the sparks un on the underside of that funny car for Steve Reid. But Gary Phillips, strong run. The fire extinguishers have gone off in the retransport funny car. Well done, though, to Gary Phillips.
been a great 2009 Fuchs Australian Nationals. And it's two drags as Dean Oakey, after a lengthy layoff in the sport, back and aiming for his third Nationals trophy. What a return it would be. You can have to beat a multiple champion, though, in the process. Unbelievable. I mean, we've seen some Cinderella stories in the Andrew Pro Series before, but this one has to be up there. These two cars are set for kill. Absolutely set for kill. The conditions, the air, everything's come around to be just about perfect right now. Steve Walsh, crew chief and good friend for Dean Oakey, has really thrown a lot of clutch into this car, so expect to see fireworks. Well, again, Newby said they made minimal changes to that car. In fact, they're just going that softly, softly approach. They believe if they can just get it down the track, then Oki's going to have to produce something special to beat them. So I guess we're about to find out. One dragster being Oki going aggressive. Newby playing a more conservative grade, which is very unlike Wayne <laughs> Newby, it's fair to say. Well, they've certainly got that engine management problem sorted that you were talking about earlier, Dean. And these guys know it. They were saying before this pass, the newbies have sorted their game out. It's worrying us. We've got to go out there and threat as much as we can behind this race car. Come what may, though, it's been a very, very successful return for the American Autos. Rare Spares Dragster. 913 in the 60 for Oki. And he wins Whoa. the final. Newbie having some dramas yeah. in the finish line, but that is a great run. 562. It's a personal best. 562 for Dean Oki. Hello, he's back in top alcohol. Big time. Oki, 913 in the 60 foot. And I believe he's done this on the rear wheels almost. That is insanity. And then to lay it down with a 562. What a final, what a great race. Wayne Newby, well, he ran exactly as he said it. I'm just going to run a consistent number. Oh. He did that, but it wasn't good enough. It's a strange matchup for these two. They've never met before. They're both looking for their first ever win. It's only the second time canoli has been to a final. This is Marchant's first ever final. Can he hold up to the pressure? I loved John Canulli's candor in the Rare Spares Beer Report with my co-announcer saying, oh, we tested in Sydney, we tested in Willowbank. What it underscores is the commitment of this team in the Andrew Pro Series. He really wants to get that first professional round win. And with the bonus points, it will shape him up very nicely in the championship. And this final for Marchant has kept his championship dreams alive, regardless of the result. This for their first ever win. This for Canulli to lead the championship. Both cars are in. Marchant with a big ends in whole shot, but it looked very lazy off the start line. They are now chasing. They think ignition issues. That might have confirmed them. But John Canulli finally gets his first Edge of Pro Series round win. And the team are obviously very, very happy about that. And they lead the championship. Well, finally, they've got what they definitely deserve. This has been a long time coming, only his second ever final, but he has just been to every race winning for the last three seasons. It was an unusual drag race. Canulli's lights were all out too early, and this car just had no power. He's got off, he's thinking it's over. Now he sees Canulli's not going anyway, so he gets back on it. If he'd stayed on it the whole time, he might have got there, but this was Canulli's race from the get-go. Finals time at City Dragway for the Nitro Champs and Top Alcohol. And how many times have these two gone at it for the championship and head-to-head? -head? Always great drag racing between the two. Wayne Newby in the dragster for JBS Tools and Gary Phillips in the Lucas All Products Funny Car. Newby a little more rested and relaxed for this round of the championship. So our last two Top Alcohol Pro Series winners on track against each other. They're also the last two Nitro Champs winners on track against each other. And for Phillips, if he can win this race, all he has to do is show up at the Winter Nationals to win back-to-back -back crowns. This is genuinely a toss of a coin job, though. Two brilliant drag races. And Newby's got that aggression back. And he's got the start line by a mile. And he's got the win with a brilliant run. 563, great top end speed both ends. Gary Phillips, though, will be happy heading into Queensland. We're on board with Wayne Newby looking across at Gary Phillips and that car does not leave aggressively. Funny cars normally leave on high RPM and big leaving. Was... Let's listen. Well, there we go. That's only one gear shift. You meant to make two oh. shifts. First, wow. second, and third. I only saw one shift then, so he's either started in second or potentially shifted too early that we missed it on the onboard. I don't know, but an awkward pass. 
for Gary Phillips on that occasion, only one shift. We love having two tough dragsters on the Willowbank Raceway quarter mile. Wayne Newby, Aaron Hambridge, and talking to Aaron Hambridge and Chad, you're not going to be surprised by this, but they bolted on five pounds of lead weight at the very front of the car for this final. Will it turn the performance of this car around? Yeah, I'm sure if Hambridge had a chance, he'd like to sit on the front end of this car himself and steer it from there if it was possible. How can they keep these front wheels down? It's the big question mark coming into this pass. These guys have met five times. Hambridge holds the record over Newby three to two. The average reaction times are just awesome. They're rated first and second. Hambridge 0.75, Newby 0.79. This one is just an awesome race. Also, second in the championship up for grabs. Wayne Newby, interesting he didn't elect to run the full pull down the quarter mile. Confident with his library of data that he is going to have the right tune-up. I asked him, Newbs, what are you going to do in the final? His answer was simple. We're going to lean on it, Dean. That's what we're going to do. There's Steve Hambridge, Aaron's dad, very passionate. It's basically in between rounds. A lot of the crew for the NRE Cylinder Heads team is based in Queensland, but in between, it's basically Aaron and his dad that do all the work on this dragster between rounds of the championship. Yeah, and these race cars are a full-time job almost. You have to be in the workshop night in, night out throughout the week, making sure that everything is ready. And all those hard nights of work and the pain of accidents all that will be extinguished if Aaron Hambridge can go through and take out his second win to Nats win. Newby, he's already got two to his name. It's been a stunning run at the Winter Nationals for Aaron Hambridge. Win, lose or draw. We know Wayne Newby. We saw it in the last round of the Pro Series. He is back and things look great for him for next season. The front stay down. And Newby's clicked it off extremely early and Hambridge is back into the 50s. That's what we wanted to see today and he is pumped and so he should be. Yes, Winter Nationals champion. He finally gets a win on the board in season 09, 2010. What happened Wayne Newby? Shannon's replay, did they throw too much power at it? That car never took off. Just didn't seem to get the wheel speed up. It never, those big rear tyres did not spin up aggressively enough off the start line, you'd think. Butterflies over, it's already putting out cylinders straight away. That was really strange. I'd... Not a happy run. However, the reverse for Aaron Hambridge just soldiered on down, and the front end being a lot more stable, probably seated those rear tyres better as well, and that's the result. Well, he won this event 12 months ago. Somewhat controversial matters this time around, though. There is no doubting that Aaron Hambridge is the Winter Nationals champion. Aaron, congratulations. Chad, thank you very much. Um, what can I say? I love the Winter Nationals. This, is the, uh, this meeting is the best of us. We've come three years in a row now. A runner-up in a national record. Last year we won, and this year we've reset the record and won. So um, this is unreal. I've got to thank some people. Uh, Jamie Noon in this car is his. We crashed in Perth. Without him, I wouldn't have been able to run the rest of the season. Uh, that was uh, really big of him. Uh, Faber Australia supplies us with a really good pass to get the car running. Um, a special note of Gary Bohr, the guy from America who actually owned this car before we came out. He's been uh, out here this weekend giving us a bit of a hand, so that's been really good. But um, yeah, all in all, great weekend. Well, there's a few more months left before we start next season. Enjoy them and uh, enjoy tonight. I will, thank you. transition is done. The process is now complete. In top door slammer, John Zapier has moved from upstart West Aussie with a wild reputation to a back-to-back -back Andra Pro Series champion in the fastest accelerating sedans on the planet. At first, many of John Zapier's rivals were supportive of a man who had raced more on emotion and passion than finances for more than two decades, with no series championship to show for it. Suddenly, last season, however, things started to change with the striker car winning another Andra Pro Series crown. Door slammer rivals weren't happy with one man dominating such a brutal class of motorsport. Suddenly, start line gangs came into play in trying to unseat a man who was in recent times become unbeatable. Will things change in top door slammer this season? Or will once again John Zapier leave the field in his way at over 400 kilometers per hour? John Zapier, fresh combination. The conditions, 
be a little interesting as the air cools down. The track has cooled down some as well. Into pre-stage, Zapia on 20 race wins, closing in on the all-time record of 24. 0.981 to the 60 for Morris Fabiani, big moment for John Zapia. Goodness me, what happened there? That is enormous fuel pouring out of the front end of the striker car. This is a monster accident. Morris Fabiani takes the win, ends the win streak. And Zapier is moving inside that race car. A oh. monumental collision with the concrete wall head on. Just before half track. Obviously, we're relieved wow. to hear that John Zappi is A-OK. -okay. Obviously, the striker crushing and screening Monaro is not. This iconic drag racing vehicle, an enormous hit into the side retaining wall. Morris Fabietti takes the win. 0.981 to the 60, as quick as I've ever seen in a door slammer car. Well, let's have another look at this. Zappi unloads those rear tyres. Could oh. that be the cause? Wow, it really got up on that wall. A big impact. Head on, we'll have another look. He got half off and half on that racing groove, didn't it? Well, he's always been on the edge of destruction, it's fair to say. Oh, man, he got up on that wall with the shift light shining red in his face still. But that has done a lot of damage to the front of that car. He has a habit of getting off that racing groove and keeping the car tidy. Obviously not that time. On board with Fabietti this time. Violent tyre shake for Fabietti. Has a pedal. The taco shook loose. He would have absolutely no idea what's happened behind him. The head-on angle, this will give us a good look. Synchronised shake. Wow. Just, just unloaded big time. The balance of the car just totally left John Zapier. When you do a wheel stand like that and you come down hard, you take all the weight off the rear tyres and it can send you into a tyre spin very, very quickly. Zappi's out, he's walking around. The main thing is for the iconic West Aussie drag racer, he is OK. Fabietti takes the win. If these cars hold over the first third of the racetrack, expect something special. If they leave hard, if they hold it through first gear, if they hold it together in second gear and lock up in the clutch, expect something extraordinary. Two killer racers who have produced a mountain of testing, a mountain of races. Can Robert Judd finally beat John Zapier for the first time? Can he break the duck here in Sydney? Plenty of time in pre-stage, plenty of air gap in that clutch on both sides of the racetrack. Here comes Zappi, he's taking his time. Whole shot to Judd, Zappi gets near the wall. What a drag race. Oh, the quickest side-by-side -side door slammer race in the world. How cool is that, baby? <laughs> and finally, they break the duck and Stuart Rowland is pumped. <laughs> the striker team are in there celebrating with him. I think even they're happy for him. That is one of the most deserved wins I've seen in drag racing. And what a way to do it. A 585 beats a 587. It's a PB for Robin Judd in competition. And that is unbelievable. Zapier, here's a record he never thought he'd have. The quickest ever losing pass with a 587. And this race day date, oh, this will be good. On board with Robert wow. Chart, just inches ahead of John Zapier. Oh, Once amazing. again, though, congrats to John Zapier. Damaging the car badly in the earlier round just weeks ago, and he's made it through to a final as they emerge from the smoky fog here in Sydney. Fabietti, the crew looking a little apprehensive. He's got the pre-stage light on. He was in pretty quickly. Still waiting on Judd. We'll see if Fabietti's going to bring the revs up. Who's going to be first in the stage? He did complete the burnout, did the Holton Trade Club car. Revs are up. But now they're down. Judd's revs are up high. Fabietti's not. Judd's in. Waiting on Fabietti. He's not going to go in. Oh, that's no, tough he's, break. He's waving inside the car. He shut it off. It's all Judd. Wow. That's a mismatch. It didn't happen. And a 587. Well, Morris Fabietti needed his A game. That is a great way to take out an event win. That's two in a row for the likeable West Aussie. Tough break for Morris Fabietti. Obvious concerns with the engine area of that car. Living to fight another day. So it's I'd uh, rather drive the Studebaker than push my Holden on this occasion. <laughs> the Studebaker of Robert Judd takes out the Golden States. Taylor through first gear. A great lap of 587.
This is oh. what happened inside Fabietti's car. This is the Holden Trade Club car. And there you go, the RPM oh. back down and switched off. Alerting the starter, no, I'm out, I'm gone. So tough break for Fabulous. But speaking of Fabulous, it's been a great event remembering Robin Judd walked a tightrope in qualifying. John Zapier has it in this final of Top Door Slammer, and it has been a top event for this category in the Andrew Pro Series, thanks to Auto One and NZ. Better NZ reaction time to Judd, but he steps out of the groove, and Zapier wins it, knocking on the door of his national record zone. That is a smashing win. Welcome back to the winner's circle, the striker crushing and screening team. Victorious once again, it's Zapier's second Western Nationals win, denying Robin Judd out of the groove. Minimal tyre shake, that's all Zapier needed. Stuttery start there off the start line for Robert Judd. But John Zapier just listening to the note of that striker car. It's sweet, it's quick, it's arrow straight. Just about there is where the race was won. Judd got out of that groove, it started to shake around, Zap simply drove away from him. On board with Robin Judd, trying to correct it, and it's over by that stage. That's a big win for the Monaro, and this new car, we've touched on it before, a feature of it right of screen. It still moves around a little bit, but it doesn't move anything like the old striker car. Big win for Zap. Lumpy and the crew pretty pumped about that, as are the Perth fans. So it's down to two in this key round of the Andrew Pro Series, thanks to Auto One and NZ major supporters of Championship Drag Racing in Australia. And John Zapier, big moment in the points chase for both races. A serious purchase if they can claim the win. Fabietti coming out now. What a great return to hot form. He admitted five or six weeks ago, Chad, he didn't believe he could make this event. Such was the setback coming in after that incident in regional Victoria. But he is here and he's through to the final and he has a perfect win record against his rival in the other lane coming into finals. Coming into finals, he is two to nothing. Zapier, though, overall they've met four times and it's two each. Now we saw that sunset shot and look at it, it's just not as much sunlight as earlier. Track temp just starts plummeting and as we saw in qualifying, John Zapier did not like the conditions when the track was cooling. For Fabietti, I asked him, what's been the secret to his success here this weekend? And he goes, well, clutch, suspension, gear ratios, tyre pressures, but he was coy in telling me specifics. Needless to say, he is confident of a good showing in his final. He needs to if he wants to have a say in the championship. Time advantage to Fabietti. Zapier deviates, shakes a little bit, and Fabietti wins it. What a result! Championship is alive in the Pro Series. This one is going all the way to the Winter Nationals. Morris Fabietti, unbelievable! What they've managed to do to get back to the racetrack. Look at the team, absolutely jubilant with all their efforts. 5.94 in the final. Zapier's run of fives on race day comes to an end. Only the third time in two seasons that he hasn't run a five in race day. What is it about Morris Fabietti in finals against John Zapier? Yeah. Big shake, oh. butterflies, a feather a little bit on the striker oh. crushing and screening car. He was beat fair and square in that final. We'll be the first to admit it's these conditions. There's those clutch bucks coming through to the cabin. Once again, steering wheel barely even moved. That is as cool a run as you'll ever get from Fabietti. Oh, you bet. Top Door Slammer is a very unpredictable bracket. Huge moment for Gary Phillips. The tyres exploded. He clouts the wall. In drag racing, luck is a big part of it. How did he avoid Morris Fabietti? Amazing! Performance is, is one thing, but you've got to have luck on your side. Oh, big problem for Matt Abel. Look oh. at that man handling the car. That was a wicked drive job. What is it going to take? You know, it's just you, anything can happen. Who knows? Big moment for John Sapia. We've just got to go on our A game and uh, hope we come out on top. What happened there? That is enormous. Winning the championship 
is the culmination of 10 years of, of uh, hard work and commitment, not only by myself, but uh, my crew. They are absolutely paramount to uh, this team and the success of um, our racing. Unbelievable what they've managed to do to get back to the racetrack. Look at the team, absolutely jubilant with all their efforts. Everyone's busted their butt for the last five weeks to get us here, to qualify and to win the meeting, but it can't get any better. Big hole shot advantage to Ben Bray. It is time. Oh. Ben Bray wins it on a mega hole shot. Door Slam is probably the, the toughest class out there. You can't buy a tune-up from America as such, like most of the other guys can. Uh, you've really got to work it out yourself. Oh, jeez! Oh, man, Morris knows the feeling, Ben. Oh. Morris knows the feeling. Drag racing is a funny thing. With your performances, you're, you're never satisfied. Jack Red Lights! That is in a big moment in the championship. John Zappi with the easy win and runs Whoa. a killer number. The door slam a crown. We've got two of them, and a third one will be good. We're living the dream, but you know there's a lot of hard work in between the shiny moments. Big NZ reaction time advantage to Fabietti. Zapier deviates, shakes a little bit, and Fabietti wins it. To have two wins and a runner-up, it's just been fantastic. And uh, we're going into the win at Nationals. We're in third place, and uh, we've got nothing to lose. So uh, we're going to be a major threat to the two guys ahead of us. Whole shot to John Zappi gets near the wall. What a drag race! Oh, the quickest side-by-side -side door slammer race in the world. It's been the best result we've had uh, for a long time, and then it's only been the last uh, two or three years we've been able to claw my way back. We'll uh, we'll chase it uh, as hard as we possibly can. Better NZ reaction time to John, but he steps out of the groove and Zappi wins it the door of his national record zone. That is a smashing win. To win this one means three in a row and uh, I don't think that's been done for a while and it's just, you know, we want to stay at the top. Welcome back to the winner's circle, the striker crushing and screening team. What a result! Championship is alive in the Pro Series. We're down to the final. It's been an amazing season for these two West Australians. They really have throttled the bracket. And these special fast facts, Chad, back up exactly that. Going back to 2007, John Zafia's domination over Robin Judd holds that record 9-1. to one. This is the 11th time they have met. Whoever wins it wins the championship in the 20 grand. It is on. And for the last time for top door slammer this season as we see the focus of John Zapier and Robin Judd and their teams. It's time to sit back and enjoy the l &H sights and sounds of the Andra Pro Series. Crank it up.
never led the championship the entire season, but now he leads it on the final race of the year. Fish tailing down the drag strip and nailed to the start line. Robin Judd's dream is over. He will be the bridesmaid for a third season. Dapier drove it away from that center line and another Pro Series win. Over the season, this is how tight it has been. 12 round wins apiece, but the one that counted went to John Zapier. It's been such a long journey for him, and now he's won three of them after so many years without success. And Robin Judd can take heart from that, that he too can still dare to dream to win a championship. Unreal. Oh, look, we've got too many things to hang on to here. Ah, <laughs> oh, fantastic. Like just like to thank Striker Crushing and Screening for giving me this opportunity to, to go professional with this car and to use his car all season. But uh, all the crew, they've just worked their butts off all season, rebuilding the car with a crash at the beginning and coming from behind all the way, working the hard. I mean, it's the best ending for drag racing that had to happen on the last line of the last point. Air bottles on, burnout switches on, pins out. Battery on? Let's go, brother. Oh. Oh. Pro Stock is a drag racing category about precision and the pursuit of perfection. To achieve high levels of performance in these aerodynamically restricted, six and a half litre small block carburetted V8 engines, a lot of things need to fall your way. set new levels of performance in Pro Stock, it is often Mother Nature and the condition of the racetrack that will provide the final say. Yeah! On this race day eliminations, we started the day with 16 cars. We're down to the final two now. Nick Zarakis for Prolac and Lee Bektash in the Mopar entry. He's been stuffed over into the left-hand lane, which, well, <laughs> has been coming around, getting a little bit better as the racing has gone on. Seems just to be the Pro Stock cars that have been struggling with it so far today. A lot of the other cars have been struggling with both lanes. Now, Nick Zarakis, two years ago, was rated number one in the average reaction times, and last year, it was this man who was rated number one in the average reaction times. This race could well be won and lost on the start line. Zarakis has been going left every time he's touched the accelerator pedal. And nobody in this left lane has uh, been really comfortable. So, interesting little matchup. Zarakis today, Dean, has had this slightly better action time. Nick Zarakis telling us earlier in the paddock that they've got a new engine, a freshened up engine ready for the next round of the championship. The engine in this car now is over 12 months old. And in Pro Stock, that's a fair while. And how about Lee Bektash? He has been to three finals now, four finals in eight race meetings, I think it is. And well, he has to win one of these eventually. The poor guy lost the Winter Nationals to Shane Tucker. He's lost finals to the Tremaines. Is he due now? Nick Zarakis, as we touched on earlier, stripped this car down to the bare chassis, went back to front, front to back. The only thing that didn't change was the distinctive fluorescent paint on this car <laughs> between the last round of the championship and this vital round here at Western Sydney. Another interesting note, Zarakis has been very quick during the day. It's now night time. Could this hurt him? Here we go. It's going to be Fuchs, Nationals champion. The RPM sounded just a little low. Identical NZ reaction times. And poor Oli Bektash oh. is still denied a win, but Nick Zarakis has <laughs> carried the performances today. No question. He's been the man to beat, and it's netted him an Andrew Cole Christmas tree. Let's see the launch again. Carbon oh. copy straight to the left of the groove. But amazingly, it hasn't cost him. What happened to Lee Bektash in the other lane? You heard something. Yeah, the radio comms through. Apparently, Lee Bektash could not get the car out of the limiter for the burnout. So the motor would not run above 8,800 RPM. They don't lock up the clutch until after 9,000 RPM, a lot of these cars. So much for trying to hit those shift points. If you can't even get there, he will be absolutely livid with that. So, Lee Bektash looking for his first pro stock win up against the two-time champion. Bektash does not want to become the first person to lose three finals in three race meetings. He knows what it's like to win six in a row, but that was in super gas, a sportsman category, a feeder category, up to this level. Well, the barometric pressure is awesome. The air temperature is damn awesome. We refer to that and the humidity. There is none. What are we going to see in this final? 13 cars, 
down to two. First time ever at the Perth Motorplex. Waiting on Beck Tash. Both now really strong to the 60. But look at the reaction time. That's going to be tough. Oh. And it's an unbelievable drag race. 706, 706. The crowd that have braved the conditions are roaring. That is unbelievable. Lee Beck Tash heartbreak. That is ridiculous. Go 706 in a final and lose on an 05 light. Man, he was pinned to the tree by Aaron Tremaine. Unbelievable racing. I am gobsmacked by this racing. The best pro stock event we have ever seen in Australia. Pure and simple. The quickest side-by-side -side pass <laughs> by a comfortable margin. Oh, Did he hit his shift points? Oh, a tiny bit late on that second one, but see whoa, the, yeah. See, see the double view. flash of the shift light. That is a bump in the racetrack that causes the drive shaft speed just to unsettle a little bit. But how's that for a margin? Well, this should be a beauty. John Barbagallo hit his straps in that semi-final matchup. The launch characteristics of the car looked aggressive again. A squatted down when he gets that rear end right down low. Low ride height seems to really leave well. Get that nice wheel speed up. He often has a play with the falling suspension on the back end of his car too. He's always... I guess it's a walking, talking, living, breathing dyno, this car for him, as part of his JV Automotive business. Well, that's it. And this is actually the sixth time he's come up against one of his customer engines. He's 60% win record against them could be uh, up for grabs here because we know how quick Newcomb is. He has lost the last two races against his customer engines, but he does hold a one nothing record over Newcomb. They've never met in the final, though. I think these two would just be delighted to uh, square off in the final, and it certainly keeps both in the Andrew Pro Series point score picture as we head to Sydney for the Nitro Champs and, of course, the Winter Nationals, the big grand final of the Andrew Pro Series. Check out andrew.com.au for more info. You don't want to miss those events. Pro Stock will return to Willowbank Raceway in June for the Winter Nats, like you mentioned, Dean. It is going to go all the way to the very last round. Three stage lights are on. Will there be a bit of a staging duel? Not really. Once again, JB gets the job done off the start line, but he loses traction. It's all over. Newcomb, first win in Andrew Pro Stock. Well done. Former Rocket All Stars champ in Super Gas, and he's nailed it. He's broken through. But Barbie had him off the star line. Then you see the wiggle just short of 330 feet. That cost him at the end. He's just been dicing on the edge of traction all weekend, and it's come back to bite him in the final. So I'm saying the, the track, the grooves, a little narrow, narrower than we're used to seeing at Willow Bank, and you had to really place your car on the right part of the racetrack, Chad. Well, that's usually a result of the track being so good because none of the cars have been getting out of the groove to make the groove wider. Exactly. Yep, yep. Oh, slightly late oh. change in a the fifth there for Newcomb, but he's drove such a good race meeting. He's deserved that win. Well done, and he's puffed in the car. Well, there you go. Shift, miss, shift. Ah, it's all over. But plenty of points for John Barbagallo out of this round. Watch left of screen, the white car. And that stuff really shows up on the data when you're going through that much wheel speed. And he felt it in the car pretty quickly and knew he was all over on the hot streak this weekend for the Brisbane Isuzu car. Good job, mate. Good work, eh? Just as well, man. I put third. Well, did you? <laughs> Yeah, no, you don't. Oh, beauty, eh? Yeah. Awesome. I think I hosted you on the tree, but... Yeah, you would. <laughs> what a climax this is promising to be. Aaron Tremaine and Dave Newcomb. Newcomb holds the record 2-1 to one over Aaron Tremaine. And if you believe in history, and will it repeat? Well, the last two Sydney Dragway meetings, both the Tremaines have been eliminated by the same driver. That is exactly what Newcomb's looking to do here. The reaction time, Taylor, has been interesting in the Nitro Chance for Pro Stock for these two races. Looking at the reaction time so far for Aaron Tremaine, 0.072 in round one, 0.051 in round two, 0.045 in the semi. So progression, but a better progression path for Dave Newcomb. 0.078, then an 0.029 in round two, then a 0.012 in the semi-finals, which leaves Chad an interesting average reaction time, Taylor. Yeah, well, they both came in with a 0.022 light. Tremaine slipped to an 0.032 light. Newcomb's just three thousandths of a second better. So, man, we're talking about a sport here, guys, that is separated by thousands of a second. And those couple of thousands of a second could make the big difference at the finish line. That is certainly the prediction from us two in here at the moment. 
and you can go back to back. Dave Newcomb always looks pretty cool, calm and calculated, but geeing himself up, making the final preparations, making sure he knows where that Liberty Shifter is, that he's going to make his procedure bumping into full stage correct. Aaron Tremaine is the only driver to go back to back wins in Andrew Pro Stock. Can Newcomb join him there? And maybe deny him an extra 20 points in the Pro Series. You just feel this sort of championship surge, don't you, with Aaron Tremaine? It's been a familiar one in recent seasons, the imprint that the Tremaniac team have left on this category in recent seasons cannot be questioned. Can he deliver? Oh, brilliant in-set reaction time. And a disappointing one by Newcomb's lofty standards. And a Cossie. Oh, oh. Whole shot win. What a final. 7-1-1, 7-1-1. But the slower time by a thousandth wins it. Man, that is incredible. Dave Newcomb. He will be kicking himself. There's nothing worse as a driver to be beaten to the finish line when you have the quicker car. 7-1-1-9 against the 7-1-1-8. It was won and lost at the tree. The A train is headed for the last stop, the Winter Nats. Man, what a great race. Been an awesome season once again, but Dennis Whiting, it'd be great to see him strike through here as well. As he's fired up, ready to burn out. Well, it's a big ask. Last time these two met, it was the 09 Nitro champs. And Whiting lost that one by 9 thousandths of a second. He did his best on that occasion. He'll have to do his best here again. Can Aaron Tremaine join his two-time Winter Nationals winning brother, his Winter Nationals winning father, and cap off another great pro series? Speaking to Dennis Whiting, he was grinning like a Cheshire cat in the pits, and why not? Uh, he knew with this new configuration, new engine combo, and now the generosity, too, of the uh, Tucker fraternity and getting him some fresh racing rubber. They've seen him really incrementally improve his performances here today. He knows he needs to do a slew of testing in the off-season, yeah. but already he's getting a bank of good data, good numbers to really come out swinging next season. Well, as far as privateers go, he's one of the bigger ones. He does have his own dyno uh, availability in Toowoomba. Uh, did a bit of pre-winter's dyno work himself, and now it's just a matter of figuring out those gear ratios. Chatting to him, he's pretty happy now that he's run that 706. He knows what it takes to go fast. Once you've done it once, that's when you can hopefully keep doing it. And boy, does he need it here. And a better than average reaction time because his average reaction time is a few hundreds down on Aaron. Aaron Tremaine, a lot of R&D in the off-season as well, perfecting the cylinder head technology in these amazing engines. Pretty even at the tree. Oh, point 0.9 in the 60 for Aaron. When that you go amazing. below one, you're flying. And he does it. What a season. What a result. His first ever Casual Edge Winter Nationals crown for the three-time champ. And he does it with a 7.04 at 193. Kerry Tremaine is absolutely elated with that one. You can't believe it. Can this kid do any wrong? He is just steaming the competition year after year. He has an intimate relationship with that Christmas tree. <laughs> he really does wire to that. Oh, man, his average reaction time is zinging along. 028. Is he unbeatable? At the moment, we all know cylinder head technology. We're talking about that in engine performance, but he is getting them, gapping them all where it counts, racing these cars down the quarter mile. He's leaving so well, nailing his shift points within a few RPM, not just tens or hundreds. He is in awesome form. The A train goes three in a row. And it's another Winter Nationals win for you. Aaron, congratulations. Another gold Christmas tree. A perfect season, just about. Yeah, mate. Uh, what can I say? It's just been a great day today. Been a great weekend. Thanks to Willowbank Raceway for putting on such a great event. Thanks to my family, all my crew. Couldn't do it without them. All my sponsors, Deco Glaze, Fuchs, Tremaniac Racing, Stephen Fox Homes. Just everyone, NRE, who helps us out. We're going to get this new cylinder head on this thing and we'll see if we can come back next year and be better again. Six seconds. You want to be first? Oh, I'd love to be first, man. The factory pocket rockets that is Pro Stock Motorcycle provide tight and tough drag racing action. Now that was a tight drag race! At the Fuchs Australian Nationals in Sydney, we welcome a full field of the precision machines which always produce tight racing. It was tight off the start line though and it's going to be tight at the finish line! Finals time at the Fuchs Australian Nationals and this is our final, final 
for what has been a terrific event over the past few weeks on one. The racing has been fantastic. We're down to two in Pro Stock Motorcycle. And this is a real toss of the coin job. And who would have thought with Morris Allen coming in, well, on the hot seat, on the bottom half of this qualifying sheet, up against Andrew Batcock. The Speed Cycle Suzuki, the place to go if you're looking for custom motorcycle parts. And the grip at reverse auctions, Suzuki, of Andrew Badcock on debut for Trevor Birrell up against the man who won this class at the 91 Nationals 18 years ago. You suspect a tight finish. Oh, Badcock's in a linger from first to second gear a little bit. It was tight off the start line, though, and it's going to be tight at the finish line. Oh. Oh, Badcock gets it. A 35 over a 38. And oh my, margin of victory. 54 ten thousandths of a <laughs> second. Is that tight enough for you? That's when you really dig Pro Stock Motorcycle. That is the closest pro bike final we have, or the closest pro bike race we've seen in years. What a way to cap off the Fuchs Nationals. It's been a great event. And that marks it with a stamp. Michael Gilbertson and Phil Howard. Okay, well, there's a, a couple of droughts that we're looking to break here. One is the Michael Gilbertson drought. Yes, he's the defending champion, but he didn't win a race meeting that year or the year before. So he's looking to end his personal drought here. The other drought is the Kawasaki drought. You've got to go back nearly three seasons to find the last time a Kawasaki won a Pro Stock motorcycle. Good light for Bluey Howard. And it's going to be Gilbertson oh. to chase. He did the mid-track steer job again. Oh. And it's a squeaker at the finish line. Howard just gets their whole shot win. Wins wow. the race with a slower elapsed time. Wow. That happened again, Chad. Watch the front wheel on Howard. It's going to be hard to see. We might see it from Gilbo's bike. He just disappeared in front of him. Took the narrowest of wins. But these guys have saved their A-game for the very last race. They said it was going to be a matter of who can hold on the longest. Right of screen. Right of screen. Watch the front oh, wheel again. Man. At high speed, he's doing that, Phil Howard. Corrects it. And that's very smart and savvy riding after his struggles in qualifying. And that's the margin of victory. Well and truly less than a full bike length. So on board from Howard. What a great drag race to finish off what's been an incredible Pro Stock Motorcycle meeting. And Andrew Badcock, the third rider for Trevor Birrell to ride at Willowbank in the last two seasons. And he'll be the third rider to win at Willowbank for Trevor Birrell. Trevor Birrell, the owner, standing right behind and crew chief. Ross Lemberg could not contest this final after junking a motor. And this is a great pass. It's actually low ET of the round, 732. Wow, Badcock. The racing action in Pro Stock Motorcycle can be so tight and so tough, and the margins of victory so close. If you blink, you could miss exciting Andra Pro Series action. Oh, what a drag race! Oh, oh. Racing stuff! This two world class is on the march, and after a full field at Willowbank, with some great side by side action, this tough collection of racers heads to Sydney and the Nitro Champs with some serious spring in their step. Andrew Badcock has clicked quickly with team owner Trevor Birrell, and his riding style and performances down the quarter mile have impressed all onlookers. That has him in great championship shape, heading to the key concluding rounds for the category. The sands in the hourglass are running out for reigning champ Michael Gilbertson on his flying hogs. And Sydney must represent a return to top line form, or his Andrew Pro Series defence will be in tatters. Interesting little matchup this one. Andrew Badcock and Phil Howard both have only lost once this season, but Howard's championship was really derailed at that last round where he failed to qualify at Willowbank Raceway. I've only met once, and it was Badcock on that occasion who did take the win. But, and we're checking the form guide while we're at it, Howard does have the better average reaction time. We've seen how lightning he can be at the start line. We've alluded to earlier, Badcock has been very, very good in terms of his alertness at the shift point. He has been right on it, and Trevor Birrell's confident they made the, the shift light adjustments. 
to really suit his riding style. A new clutch set up this season, and now the 60 footing really well. Went 1.0 in qualifying session three. If they're around that vicinity once again off the start line, we should see the maximum package of Pro Series points for the Dutch Master Bike. To have any hope of the title, Howard must win this race. Reaction time advantage, big time to Badcock, and that's a big scalp, and he takes the win with a good run. Howard, tough break, 7.53, but the Dutch master team in the lounge chair for the championship now. Well, let's just hope that they stay in the lounge chair and then go to the Winter Nationals, and not the, <laughs> not the hospital, not the maternity ward, because that's all that can steal, amazingly, the championship away from Andrew Badcock at the moment. He just has to rock up to the Winter Nats to claim his maiden title. Still flared that right knee out a little bit early into the run. Just stability on the bike, maybe. Oh, there, there you go, right is. there. Yeah. Well, see, the 7.26 that he pulled out in qualifying still the best pass of the weekend. Finals time at the grand final round for the Andrew Pro Series, the Castrol Edge Winter Nationals. Pro Stock motorcycle action. Peter Cochran has been awesome so far at this event, and Phil Howard will really need to be on his A game to defend the event win he took 12 months ago. Now, how about this? This is the first time we've had an all Kawasaki final. We had to look into this one. Since the 1990 Nationals at Ravenswood, it was Phil Howard in that race. He lost to Ray Eason. Kawasaki's back in the sunlight. This is his third consecutive Winter Nationals final. Talking about Peter Cochran, he took one of them. Whoa, massive end set line. reaction time for Peter Cochran. That is a brilliant yeah. way to finish out. How about that for a tested tune? Take wow. the win, why don't you, Peter? 7.34 in the final. It's another fast one. 2.97 kilometres now this time. He's just off his national speed record, which he set on the bill. But this is the Kawasaki. Two Kawasakis, to be precise. Awesome stuff from Pete Cochran. Takes the win by 0.16 of a second. Just rode away from him. The Pegamore's DAP electrical team would be very, very happy with what they've seen. This team have been together a long, long time, and that was an outstanding run. They've been spending a long time with Craig Thompson and the Jack Brothers crew in refining that engine. Well done. Well, Pete, the Punisher Cochran, welcome back to the victory lane. You could not have picked a better race meeting to do it. The winner, Nationals. Congratulations. Thank you very much, mate. It's fantastic. Um, it's all it's all the crew, all these guys over here. My good friend Craig Thompson. He's been doing a lot of development on the bike with um, Jack Brothers and uh, Tony and Gavin Eels and Serco have come along and helped us out with some special Wisco pistons. And here we have it, some power, and we're in the finals. Thanks. That's it, mate. Look at this beautiful Kawasaki. Serco really got helped you out this season, and it is getting quicker and quicker and quicker. This weekend really proved that, and an all Kawasaki final too. Yeah, it's fantastic having an all Kawasaki final. We're all Kawasaki fiends. And yeah, yeah, we're tipping on the record, it's 188, so we're getting closer. They are so close, they can almost touch it. The rarefied air, a final frontier. Down the quarter mile, in five seconds, on a top fuel motorcycle. Five seconds, two wheels at almost 400 kilometres per hour. For both Jay Upton and Chris Matheson, they are within one-tenth of a second of achieving two-wheeled immortality by being the first to achieve the feat in Australia. If we do it, we do it. We're hoping to do it like it's, it's up there on the goal list and uh, hopefully it happens sooner than later, otherwise we might miss out. <laughs> Obviously, it's a huge thing as an achievement in top fuel bike racing is be one of the few people in the world who can run a five and the first one to do it in Australia, first one Southern Hemisphere, etc. would be a great thing. One is a seasoned champion who has tasted the highs and lows of this unforgiving game. The other is the new boy on the block who entered the sport with a clear goal and already understands the dangers of his pursuit. Upton the local hero and emotional favourite. Matheson, the high-flying businessman with a low-flying hobby, both chasing that dream of the first five-second pass. And both will do whatever it takes during the Western Nationals at the Perth Motorplex to achieve that dream.
And it's two West Aussies in the final of this Andrew Pro Series action at Western Sydney. Great crowd on hand. And once again, we'd like to thank Auto One and NZ for supporting Pro Series action on 1HD. Motorsport in high definition, Jay Upton. Both riders have been a bit out of control this weekend. Ah, uh, look at this, they're staging and pointing left. That's interesting. So this is the way they've combated it. The bike is pointing slightly towards the left. Certainly have been impressed with his short times. This older chassis had been sluggish off the line. It hasn't been that case. Oh, oh huge NZ hold shot. And but still near the centre line for Jay it. Upton. Collects the timing blocks. Game over. Kim Stevens wins it with a solid 682. But Jay Upton, despite the alignment off the start oh. line, still striking trouble. So Jay super late on the tree. And the bike still want to go towards the centre line, try to steer it. But how about this, Dean? 4.1 to half track. That meant he was on a 6.15 if that thing went straight. Well, that's amazing because he was only doing 173 mile an hour according to when he struck the timing markers. Oh, and when he ran wow. that 617 in Perth <laughs> testing, he went 196 miles an hour. So yeah. potential plus for the White Knight. Oh yeah. For Chris Matheson, though, it's a new world he's still coming to grips with by his own admission and the team in turning around this motorcycle as well. It's a huge thing to get used to. That bike that you're looking at is the quickest motorcycle in the world. Well, it was at one point. It went 5.80 seconds in the United States in the hands of Jim Brantley. At the time, it was a world record. He hasn't gone five seconds on it yet. Nobody has on a motorcycle. This man, Jay Upton, has gone 611. He believes it is his God-given right to be the first man to go five seconds in Australia. A bit of a grudge match almost this one. Big final this one. Could Jay Upton better his national record that he has established at this event? Can Chris Matheson take it off him and claim the win? Upton with the advantage. A bit of a flame out. Big ET though, 6-1-3. Problems for the red line oil entry of Chris Matheson. Big win for the West Australian. Rory Taylor and the team are happy with that one. It was a big fireball from underneath the body. Wow, that's really torched a cylinder head. They threw a lot more fuel into that pass. But launched beautifully, these new chassis and suspension setups. Great flames, 200 mile an hour to half track. And at that point, that's where the flame started, just too rich. For Matheson, well, he borrowed a battery pack for the starter cannon in the final from Kim Stevens. So how about that for sportsmanship? And that is, well, the question's got to be now, where next for Jay Upton? There's the cylinder head damage. I know one man who'll be watching this race, Jay Upton, because there are so many points that can be taken away from Jay if this man wins this race. First time we've had two Queenslanders meet in a top bike final since the East Coast Nationals in September 2007. Anything can happen in finals. What's going to happen? Oh, oh. Mountain of tyre smoke! Here he comes, here he comes! This is going to be tied another flame oh. out in the cowling. Who won that? Rick yeah. Ray! Unbelievable race! Chad, you alluded to it in the pit report and look what happened! <laughs> Oh, that is, that is the biggest underdog win I've seen in the Pro Series. Riders Green Matheson smokes oh. the tyre on their hit, and Redgraves runs and runs and runs. It's turtle ahead. Whoa, he was smoking that tyre to quarter track. 23 thousandths of a second at the finish line. That is the most amazing win I have seen in the Pro Series today. What was that coming off the bike? Unbelievable drag oh. race to finish up. There you go, the catch, the pedal. We know Upton is a master of it. Matheson getting better all the time, and he was yep. nearly good enough to pickpocket a win against Redgrave. Left a screen. What's come off this bike of Matheson's? He smoked the tyre for that long. Watching, watching, watching. He's back on. He's got full flame, full throttle, and it just was throwing fiberglass off it. I reckon it's broken that body with the amount of tyre smoke. 23 thousandths of a second. One more race to go, and it is the final of Top Bike. Chris Porter, can he cause an upset? He went to the final of this event 12 months ago, but it was Alpha Williams who took the win on that occasion. He's up against a bike that is just as quick. Chris Porter has been very consistent, always lurking, and has impressed many, including my co-announcer, in his riding style and ability. Chris Matheson has excited us right around the country in the Andrew Pro Series so far this season. This multi-cylinder, nitro-snarling beast is staring 
face to face with a five second reality at some stage you would suspect but he wants the win here oh man that bike looks so good in the evening rolled off it really early porter gee made a late oh. charge but it wasn't enough 691 that was almost beatable there for porter couldn't get around him. Porter on his A game definitely could outperform that number. But well done to Chris Matheson. Nice fluffy flame early. Porter off early. Maybe dropped a cylinder. Being a V twin, that's 50% of your horsepower gone. Well, we're about to find out exactly what did go wrong for Porter. There's the foot on the foot, Peggy. He's been riding this bike well, but it, it was just sluggish the whole way down. It did get a little bit messy in the braking area too. Look how violent his shoe scraping on the ground. So violent these bikes, particularly the Harleys. And Chris Matheson carrying it nicely on that rear tyre. The oh, nose is over at half track. At half track for a 691. This bike has so much potential left. This man could finally nail a new performance benchmark. Five something seconds in the quarter mile. Is it possible? The conditions are there. Well, to put it in perspective, the half-track time that Chris Matheson has recorded is similar to what we see out of Robin Judd and John Zappi and Dawes Lammer. They run strong 5.8s, but because he can't quite get to the finish line, that's why we haven't been seeing the five-second passes. Now, what does he do here? Does he chase that five? The track conditions are backed off a little bit. Don't want to smoke the tyre. It's strong. Drew across oh. the centre line. That definitely hands it to oh. Matheson. And look at that number, 6.05 with that run. Oh. National record, quickest in the Southern Hemisphere. And with that, moves into the top 10 quickest runs in the world. Well, I was wondering where he was fitting in on that list, and that is awesome. Top 10. Look at that Drew on the right-hand side of that tyre. Pushes him across the centre line. Matheson backed off way before <laughs> a 1,000 foot. Before three-quarter track. Watch this. His helmet will go forward. Off it cruises home. He's had an outstanding and astounding eight mile speed marks throughout this event. Well, I was talking to you after you won your first race on debut, and I'm talking to you after your first Winter Nationals win, a 6.05 national record. Chris Matheson, a great season, well done. Yep, thanks very much. Uh, big effort from the team. The guys have really, really done a great job all through the year. We've, we've had a few ups and a few downs, uh, in particular, Roger Bloor. Uh, Graham Turner all the way from Perth, Bruce McDonnell, um, all the guys, um, our sponsors, Glenford Tools, uh, Rocket Industries, uh, RB Performance, and also a special thanks to um, Larry and Steve McBride from the States, and, uh, and we dedicate this to a close friend of Rogers, his, his sick in hospital, uh, Chris, in uh, New Zealand, and mate, I hope you get better. Thank you very much.